what that structure looks like.
reject her.
Halaboshia tae lavara tae rebesi handa rabaka tae rabashe hi anda la maranda la bordi anda la baka tae rabashe hi anda rabasho torobose in the name of Jesus Christ hi alaboro kosi anda ramaha tae I believe in you Father hi otorobo koto ya ramashia tae. Yo rabaso toro boko to ye rabaseya Handa la manda la bordo koto Hi ala bahashia tarabaka taya In the name of Jesus Christ Hi a taraboseya ramati Hande rebeki andoroboseya We impart faith today, Father. He atala, we lose faith, O Lord, in this place, Father. He kandala mando robo si, andala mando robo kotoye. We release a spirit of faith in this place, Father of God. He katarabo se, andarebe si, andarebe ki, andarebe te, alaboroko si, andarebe te. We come believing in the name of Jesus we come expecting in the name of Jesus Lord we will not be oh Lord subject to any fear oh Lord or any spirit of doubt but Lord we come believing with a faith father in our spirit in the name of Jesus Christ somebody just begin to release your faith when you pray in tongues you're building your faith in the name of Jesus Christ can we do that right now he kanda la bordo shata he anda la bordo kose anda la bordo kose in the name of Jesus Christ he anda la bose there is nothing oh Lord in this world that can come against what you're wanting to do in this place he anda la bordo kose anda la bordo kose he anda la bese anda ye there is no height or depth, O oh Lord. There is no breadth or width, O oh God. He We believe, O oh Lord, in your love. In the name of Jesus, Shangaye Rabashi, Handarebo Kotoye, we come believing, Father, Ya Tarebeshi Andaye, Leo Sotoroboko. Let there be no doubt in our minds today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come with expectation, Lord. He Andarebo Koshi Ataya, O Kondorobo Shikaya. We receive your authority that is in this place today, Father. We confess, Lord, that you are our Father and that you have put all things under our feet, O oh Lord. You have given us dominion over, O oh Lord, the power of the enemy. You have given us dominion over serpents and scorpions, Lord. We receive that authority. We receive that dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are not designed for the enemy to continually beat you down. God has called you to have dominion. It is God's will for you to have the position of authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Handarabosay, Arabataye, 
Somebody believe that you have that authority. Somebody believe that it is yours. Somebody believe that it is accessible for you today. Come on, if it's in the word of God, it is for you today. Somebody rise up with that authority right now. In the name of Jesus. I release faith in this place, Father. Oh, Lord, faith for the miraculous. Faith in you that is operated through love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we receive the keys of the kingdom today, Father. He kaya rabo se samando robo kotoye andare besi andara bata handele maki andare besi somebody break through in the spirit right now he atara bo se andare beki somebody advance in the spirit right now handele bo kotoye handele bo si atai handele bo ri atai ando robo si andare be Somebody receive that authority right now and exercise it. I lose confusion, Father, in the enemy's camp. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release a spirit of victory, God, upon your body today. In the name of Jesus Christ, that's it. Somebody just begin to take dominion right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release, O oh Lord, the spirit of faith today. I bind every distraction and every hindrance that would come against what you want to do through your body. Somebody press right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take dominion and authority over every distraction. In the name of Jesus, over every hindrance in this place. Lord, we release, O oh Lord. Come on, that's it. Somebody really pray right now. Somebody really step in the vein of the Spirit. Somebody release it right now with your mouth. Let nothing stop what God wants to do in this place. Let there be no hindrance in this place. Somebody just let your faith arise in this place. Let it just be contagious for the people around you in the name of Jesus. Come on, we're not trying to hide this. We're not trying to conceal it. We're not trying to bottle up. We're just wanting it to be let out and released in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, that's it. Somebody release faith right now. 
Anda la borianda ye, hasa katara bose, ando robo koyanda ye, anda rebo siata ye, ando robo koto ye rabasi. Come on, that city ata ye. Somebody just begin to step out right now. Ande lebo koto robo si, ande rebe ki anda rabasi, ando robo siata ya. Hatala bordo kosi ataye, hiolo bordo kosi andaye. In the name of Jesus, come on. In the name of Jesus, hi araba se ala bordo kosi ala ba, hi andarebe si. Come on, let's break through right now. Hi andarebe. If we want to break through, we got to do it together as a body. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, let our faith combine with others, O oh Lord. He ought to let our expectancy combine with each other's faith, O oh God. He ought to rebo say alabaha. Come on, that sin, let faith arise in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, come on, let what you have be contagious for the brother or the sister around you. Handarobo siataya rabataya. Come on, God wants to do something in this place. In the name of Jesus. I release a spirit of submission, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Robo Sia Tarabata. He and nothing shall stand against it. Roko Sianda. Come on, that's it. Come on, let your faith arise in this place. Let your faith arise in this place. Just begin to talk in tongues and let the faith arise among you. Let it build up in your spirit. Roko Sianda Raba Sia Taye. And Rabo Kotoye Laba. Come out, somebody just begin to push past the obstacles and push past what is trying to hold you back and just begin to release your faith in the spirit right now. Come on, that's it. He had a boshatarabata. Handorobo siandarabakaye. Come on, let's not wait till the service ends and we have the altar call to receive what we need from God. Come on, let's not wait for there to be a breakthrough till the song starts being sung. Let there be a breakthrough in this place. Let there be a liberty in this place. Come on, that's it. Let's not let our mind be on anything else, but just on the Spirit of God. Somebody begin to release your faith right now. Come on, what you feel right now in your spirit. That's God turning up your faith. That's God stirring up your faith right now. Somebody stir up the gift that is inside of you right now. Come on, this place is not spiritually dead. Robo, this place is supercharged with faith right now. Anda Robo, somebody just begin to release it. Anda Labo Koto Raba Siandaye. Anda Labo Kondo Robo Siandaye. He cut a rabo say. Anda Rebe Ki Anda Rebe Siandaye. In the name of Jesus Christ. I wonder if we could just lift up both of our hands right now all over this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you need a breakthrough right now, receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody just begin to let loose right now. Come on, that's it. 
Come on, receive your liberty right now. Come on, that city. Let there be freedom in your spirit. I bind every spirit that will try to hinder your liberty today. In the name of Jesus Christ, be released right now in your spirit. Be released right now in your emotions. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on in the name of Jesus. Come on everybody. We need to participate right now. This needs to break in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, that's it. Somebody just begin to pray in tongues right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on in the name of Jesus. You don't have to beg God for it. He's not going to force it upon you. But if you just simply believe, He will give you the liberty that you need. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you would just believe, He will give you the liberty. You don't have to beg for it. You just have to believe and receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, that's it. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, let's receive that liberty right now. Come on, that's it. The Spirit of the Lord is moving right now. Come on, that's it. Some of you are releasing yourself right now. Come on, you don't have to beg for it. God wants to give it to you right now. That's it. Just begin to release your faith right now. Come on, that's it right there. That's it. Somebody just begin to release your faith over every spirit of doubt. Somebody just begin to release your faith over every obstacle right now. Come on, that's it. We're right there in the name of Jesus. We're right there in the name of Jesus. Somebody just begin to press a little bit deeper. Come on, that's it. Lift up your voice right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you walked in with in this place, God is getting ready to remove it. Whatever hindrance you walked in with this morning, God is getting ready to remove it. Come on, somebody grab a hold of that faith right now. Come on, just begin to press right now.
Come on, in the midst of what you're going through, in the midst of the circumstance, God is creating a flow right now. In the midst of the circumstance, God is creating a way out right now. In the midst of a circumstance, God is creating the Selah. Come on, that's it. Some of you are receiving your breakthrough right now. I refuse to be held captive, God, by my circumstance. I refuse to be held captive by what I am going through. Come on. It's got to be your desire. I'll no longer wear these chains anymore, God. Come on, we need to press right now. Somebody just begin to close your eyes right now and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's forget about everything else and let's just focus on God. Come on, we need to push past this right now. Come on, I want that liberty of the Holy Ghost. I want that liberty of the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to wait another second for it. I want it in the name of Jesus Christ. Handa la borroko si andaria taie, handa la borroko si andaie, hi anda rabo si anda rebesi, handa la bori andaie rebeki, handa rabo si andaia, kata la borroko si anda rebesi andaie. In the name of Jesus, come on, hi anda rabo si anda la mahaya. Katala boroko si arabase, handa la barianda ye, hi anda rebe si akaye. Come on, how bad do you want that living water right now? Oh, the alabasi atayara bokoye, alabarianda rabo si anda ye, handa rabo korianda ye. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Robo kotori andaye. He andarabo koramasi andaye. He andarebesi andaye. Come on, in the midst of what you're going through. God wants there to be a flow in the midst of what you're going through. He wants you to feel his presence. He arabo shatayarabo koya. Handalaboro kosi andaye. Handarabo koriandaye, harabo siataye rebesi. In the name of Jesus Christ, handalaboro kosi arabahaya, hi alaboro kosi andarabahataye, halaboro kosi ataye rebesi, halaboro kosi akataya. He andarabo kori andaye. Halaboro kosi arabaha se arabaha ye. Haye laboro kosi andaye. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shakata laboro kosi arabaha ye. In the name of Jesus. 
Sakatalamahaye. He kahasataye. He alabordo koshiataye. Alabordo koshiakataye. God is already doing something here, but I really believe that he wants to do more. Sometimes we unknowingly are limiting what God wants to do in us because our mind is preoccupied. Our mind is is busy with with the things that we're worrying about with cares and I could feel the Lord he he's just he's just wanting to do something and I asked him I said Lord I've done all that I can you're going to have to do this and he directed me and I really believe God's about to do something miraculous does anybody believe that in this place and some of you you've been you've been going through ups and downs you've been going through seasons and your life is it's I don't know why God's having me say this but your life it just does not seem perfect right now and and some of you you don't like the 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 course of your life and what's going on and there's sometimes a spirit of hopelessness that visits you and the enemy comes knocking at your door and he starts saying you'll never change you'll ne you'll never you'll never change you'll always be this way there will be no way out but i do not believe that is the word of the lord and i do not believe that is the will of the lord and and some of you the, you you're going through things right now but god wants to deliver you from a spirit of hopelessness and he's going to give you a faith today that says there is a way out of this you can't overcome this in fact my god i feel faith right now why don't we just begin to lift up our hands right now in the name of jesus christ the situation you are in right now it is not hopeless I bind the spirit of doubt. I bind the lying voice of the adversary that says I will always be like this and there will be no change in my life. I take dominion and authority over that voice right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody begin to take dominion over it right now. I will not be held captive by this voice. I will not be held captive by it in the name of Jesus by the authority of the word of God and the power that is in the name of Jesus I loose myself to be released right now in the name of Jesus Christ would you receive that right now in the name of Jesus come on that sin would you just pray in the Holy Ghost right now come on that's it receive it right now it's upon you right now my God your financial situation will not stay the same way your finances God is going to do a work in it in the name of Jesus Christ come on God's doing a work right now come on God's touching some of your finances right now and saying everything's going to be alright I will supply in the name of Jesus Christ if you believe that would you just begin to shout unto God come on God's going to give finances right now in the name of Jesus Christ would you release your faith right now in this place hallelujah
name of Jesus. Thank you for giving me your freedom, Jesus. Come on, would you put your hands together for the Lord this morning? Let's worship Him.
Jesus Christ. Lord, we worship you.
my mind sing. Let my being sing. Let the praises of my mouth oh, begin to declare the glory, the majesty of the Lord God Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, would you begin to continue to build an atmosphere of praise over your life? Would you begin to build an atmosphere oh, that pushes all the voices out of your mind and only the voice of your God, only the voice of your Father, only the voice of the one that loves you? Yeah, na 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 mokoto Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, your Roboko Santa Lava Catalama Haye. Your Robo Santa Lava Yara Catalama. Your Robo Sita Lama Yanda Lavoco Sita Laye. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, I'll declare your works, God. I'll worship you, Lord. I'll give you thanks all the days of my life, oh God. I'll dwell in your house. I'll dwell in your presence, oh God. I'm never coming down, Lord, from this place, oh God. I'm never going down from this dimension of your spirit, oh Lord. Would you open up your soul right now? There's satisfaction here. There's contentment here. Oh, contentment is available in the presence of the Lord right now. It is great gain when you mix being content, believing still, but content. Oh, godliness, mixing it with contentment is great reward, is great increase. It is great gain. Would you believe that right now in Jesus' name? If all you get is godliness and contentment, you have gained. Oh, you're ahead. You're first place. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. He's a great God. He's a great God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is the will, oh, in their innermost being clear. Is the will that springs up into everlasting life without any debris this morning that it could well up inside of you at any moment, at any given time when you worship Him and praise Him. It's like a spring springing up into everlasting life. You tap into eternity. You tap into your inheritance. You tap into it in this dimension of life. Does anybody feel I'm feeling in Jesus' name? Does anybody sense the freedom that is here? That you could tap into the spring of eternal life inside of you? Would you let it flow out of you that you could have joy? That you could have peace? That you could have contentment right now, right here? Anytime you talk in tongues, you're 
tapping into your inheritance. Anytime you tap in, talk in tongues and flow in the Spirit, you're enjoying the earnest, the down payment of your inheritance. You don't have to wait. I said you don't have to wait. Come on, somebody believe that right now. You don't have to wait. You can tap into it right now. See, the prodigal son was mistaken that the father had to die or give him his inheritance. He could have enjoyed it right there. He could have enjoyed it right now. Just like you and I can enjoy it right now if you begin to believe that, if you begin to receive the revelation that it's in you. you can tap into it. Somebody received that revelation from the Word of God right now. That you can tap into the earnest or the down payment of your inheritance right now. What is the greatness of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? You could tap into heaven right now. You can get a taste of heaven right now. I don't know. Do, do you want? Do you want to tap into it? You can tap into it. Come on, would you do that right now so you will know? That when we're out of this building, you will know you can tap into it. You can let it flow at any time, anywhere. It doesn't matter the circumstances. Oh, spring up a oh well. Like the old song says, spring up a oh well. It is a source that will never run dry. It is a source that the, your Father has implanted deep within you. That nobody can steal. That nobody can steal and kill or destroy. That's why the apostles and the saints of God in the first century, no matter what they went through, Oh, no matter whether they were killed wholesale in the arenas of the Caesar, of the gladiators, they had joy. They had peace. They had contentment. Why? Because that source, that well inside of you cannot be stopped. And if no one can stop it, don't stop it yourself. Because you're the only one that can stop it. Every day you get to clear the debris out of that will, out of that pathway to heaven. They sang that song, Stairway to Heaven. And it was a vision of Jacob, a ladder that went up in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It testifies that we have access to God. You have access. Come boldly to the throne room of grace that you might find help in your time of need. Come boldly. Your Father beckons you. Your Father invites you. You are welcome into the presence of your King and your Father and your God and your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Yay! Anytime you're down, fellowship with your inheritance. Anytime this world tries to overwhelm you, fellowship with your inheritance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If that makes sense, would you shout hallelujah? If that bear witness with your spirit, would you worship him? If that rings true, would you begin to thank God that he is the one that has done that, that he has created in you. Not just a clean heart, but you have his divine nature. Praise God. The Bible says He, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of grace, the Spirit of life, the seven spirits of God, all of them are one and the same. The gifts of the Spirit. It is the earnest of your inheritance. If you've ever bought a house, you have to put an earnest money down payment. And that down payment is non-refundable. And God is basically saying, I'm putting a down payment of your inheritance. Number one, 
He's promising He'll come back for us. He'll purchase us. Amen. And He does not run out of money or resources. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein. And because you have the earnest or the down payment of your inheritance, you can tap into it at any time. Anytime you have want joy. I said, anytime you want joy. Does anybody need joy in this place? Could you use some joy? Could you use some peace? Could you use some righteousness? You could tap into it at any time in Jesus' name. What a word from God. The Lord is saying, you know, the prodigal son, he was mistaken. When he asked for his father, his inheritance. And also, the young, the older brother was mistaken. Thinking that he cannot tap into the inheritance that he already could enjoy. Because he was part of the household of his father. He said, son, what I have is thine. At any time you can slay a kid for your friends. Come on, somebody, don't live at the outskirts of your blessing. Come on, would you change your mind right now? Would you put your hand over your forehead uh, where the thoughts and the intents of the hearts reside? And would you begin to see yourself as God sees you, sons and daughters of the Lord? Uh, oh, people of God that have access to eternal things. Uh, and yes, even physical needs because your God... Uh, shall provide all your need according to his riches and glory. Would you worship him for that right now? Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Does anybody need deliverance? And from the noise and pestilence, the things that rob from you, He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that filleth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall thy, at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. It shall not come near you. If this COVID have not proven that, I don't know what would have. But God has proven that. In Psalms 91 verse 7, A thousand shall fall thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Hallelujah. Would you worship the Lord right now? There's faith in this place. There's faith in this house. Come on, would you reach out right now for what you need from God? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. can be seated if you want but I want to boost your faith by what God has done. Sister Martha would you come quickly amen and I want you to hear a testimony of the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says we are made overcomers by the word of our testimony don't ever be afraid to testify of the goodness of God amen you got to fight that voice that you can't speak hello somebody and you need to begin to testify of the goodness of the Lord. Would you worship the Lord right now before you hear what God has done in the name of Jesus Christ? Praise God. Praise God. Go ahead. I will be right behind you. God.
God has done something miraculous upon my sister and um, powerful work of God. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. She's going to share that with you. That was better. Okay. Uh, a month ago, I every day I tasted my sugar. But a month ago, I came the day before and I said, God, please, I don't want to have diabetes. They told me 10 years ago I had diabetes, number two. This, um, what is it? Um, Friday I got to the doctor and I told the doctor why my medicine is too high is three pills and my diabetes is number two. And then she said, you don't have diabetes. Hallelujah. You have pre-diabetes in control, but who told you? You had diabetes. I said, the doctor, 10, 19 years ago, they told me. And she said, no, you don't have it. Thank you, Jesus. I just thank God. Even the doctor couldn't believe. You said you had diabetes before? No, you did never. You never had it. The doctor can't even believe it. And after the test results and all that, she goes, oh, no, you've never had it. Amen. In Jesus' name. But we know the Lord healed. Amen. It's miraculous. We give God all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Let's you, worship Lord. the Lord. Come on. Would you worship the Lord? God deserves worship. He looks for worship when he begins to do the miraculous in Jesus' name. Oh, just like the ten lepers who were healed, Jesus did ask. He asked. He inquired worse than nine. Only one came back to worship. But Father, you got people here today that will worship you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Martha had type 2 diabetes. And if you know anything about that, you just don't get over that or control it. And God just miraculously healed her, and we thank God for that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sister Rachel, would you come quickly in Jesus' name and testify in the name of Jesus Christ? Uh, glory be to God. Um, I was so touched by Sister Marta's healing testimony, and it led me to a scripture, Psalm 119, 111, thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart, and that scripture means so much to more to me now than it ever has. Um, as I had testified before, on the Wednesday after Brother Mocos prayed for me, Thursday was the first day that I woke up with no chest pain. Thank you, Jesus. And <laughs> thanks. And after um, I had some, I had to go back to the hospital for some tests, but all those tests came back and said that my heart was in within normal limits. So I just give all glory to God and encourage everyone to just always share your testimony. They are definitely an encouragement, not only for ourselves, but for everyone else. So thank you, Sister Marta, from the bottom of my heart for increasing my faith, Lord, in the Lord and knowing that he can do everything. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you worship the Lord right now? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, come on, would you thank, would you thank the Lord? And would you believe your miracle right now as God, oh, is in this place and as you're thanking him, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the gift of faith, Lord, that's been undergirding the service, God, and I release your provisions, your healing, your miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we believe you, Father. We believe you, Father. Amen. If those of you that don't know, Sister Rachel, I got you. Sister Rachel was uh, diagnosed or had a condition of the heart since she was 18, per decatitis, whatever the medical term would be. Amen. But God has done something. Amen. And I don't know if you noticed, she ran today. She ran today. Praise God. Brother Couchman. I just wouldn't feel right if I didn't give God the glory today. Uh, 
Brother Mokas was here, and before service even started, I asked him to pray for me out in the dining room, and he did immediately. Uh, if you notice, I've been limping with uh, arthritis and, uh, anyway, problems with my leg, back, what have you. And so he prayed, and I didn't feel too much, so I attended service and then had appointments with uh, doctors and orthopedic surgeons and so forth. So uh, last week I went to the uh, orthopedic surgeon. He was a physician's assistant, and I'd never met him before. And so he gave me all kinds of tests, you know, like they do the doctors, different movements, all that. That's all well and good. So he said, here, sit on this table. So he did some more manipulations. And then he said, well, uh, you'll have to see your primary care physician for a steroid in injection. My hip, right here. And they, they stick a needle in between the two bones, the, the joints. And he said, well, if that doesn't work within a month, then we're going to have to give you a hip replacement. <laughs> and that's when I just laughed because my hip replacement comes from above. Yes, yes. And, and you probably saw me making the rounds this morning. Yes, and that was for me and, and the Lord. That wasn't to show off. But anyway, I, I feel no pain. I, I, I feel... I feel no restrictions, and, you know, I can do what I used to do when I was a kid, almost, yeah. But God is so good. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God is so good. Amen. And um, special day today. I'm just so thankful for all the testimonies. Thank you for your faith. Amen. Thank you for your faith, and um, for those of you who have had a taste of the healing, don't worry. You'll, God's going to complete the work, and because the signs shall follow them that believe, amen? And you just keep praising the Lord, and um, I know there is a lot more that can be shared, uh, but I just thank God for the miraculous work in Jesus' name. And church, you have the gifts too, don't forget that. You have the gifts, too, in Jesus' name. All right. Um, happy Father's Day to all our fathers here. Give them a hand. And if you haven't gotten yet your gift, amen, all the fathers have a special gift. Um, if you didn't get yours, come see me. We are Sister Couchman, but we have a special gift for all the dads. And also, um, I want to um, give honor to our pastor, who is the father of my children, amen? And he's a great dad. He's a great example. And I just thank God for the blessing, amen, um, to have him as the dad of my kids, a great father, amen, and a great example as well. And um, if you have a gift from the church, we'll give the basket later, amen? Um, cards of um, the love of the body of Christ for you and appreciation in Jesus name. All right. Now I'm also going to say that um, we have a special treat because we've got three preachers. Yeah. Amen. And um, we're going to be blessed of the Lord uh, more than once. Praise God. His revelation is going to flow. He's going to use our deacons. Amen. To give the word today in Jesus name and we will be open for God's revelation and blessing preach with the preachers amen all right and I also want to um, thank the hospitality team for today that's going to bless us amen after uh, this wonderful service and I also want to say that we want you to all stay because we're going to have after the food we're going to have games. Amen. If you enjoyed um, Mother's Day games, we're going to do similar Father Kahoot, right? Is that how you say it? And um, we're going to have two rounds again, and, and uh, many of you enjoyed that. But if you, even if you just want to sit down and observe, you can. 
But yeah, remember, we had fun, right? Sister Ella, right? You, your team, you could do a husband and wife team. Just don't fight over it if you, you know, the mistakes. You know, don't blame each other, you know, but you can have a husband and wife team as well if you want. Amen. But we're, we're going to have two rounds of this again. If you know the fathers in the Bible. But this time I had fun doing the game because it will make you think. Amen. Think. <laughs> Which father did this or did not do this? We'll, we'll test. We'll test if you know. Amen. The word of God as well. So let have fun with us. And um, Brother Luke is going to help us out with the games. And we welcome back our Marine in Jesus' name. So he's going to help us out with that game in Jesus' name. So it's for everybody. Everybody. Fathers and all. Okay. It's for everybody to join the game. And we want to encourage fellowship upon the body. And I also want to say I don't have it. The, the calendar the calendar for July will be printed next for next week. But I do want to say, just a heads up, we will have a church bonfire, amen, on July 15. Okay, you'll get the notice in the calendar um, soon, but July 15, that's a Friday. And church, if you haven't been to a bonfire, those of you, please, please join us. It's a lot of fun, amen. And um, we're going to do a, maybe do a sign-up sheet for donations of food and all that, but um, just wanted to let you know, July 15 is a church bonfire. Also want to announce that um, for the calendar Monday, amen, we're going to have our Rancho Santa Margarita Connect group, Sister Terry's place in Jesus' name, and God's going to draw the souls as well. So if you want to be part of that, if you haven't been a part of that, want to be part of that, come see Sister Terry as well. So that's um, her home um, tomorrow, right, Monday. Uh, Rancho Santa Margarita Connect Group. And then this week, we also have our camp meeting. Okay, we call it a camp meeting, but it's a building. <laughs> We're going to be in a building, amen. But it's going to be the Spirit of God's going to be with us as the Word is being preached to encourage us, to teach us as well. And so, but we will have service this Wednesday, amen. This will have service, the Lighthouse Church, and I, we know we want to grow in the Word, amen. We want to grow in how to flow in the Spirit as well, and God has a special treat for this Wednesday in Jesus' name. So come be here Wednesday, same time, and then afterwards, we're, uh, we encourage you to join our district camp meeting. When I say district, it's all churches um, in this district, county, and some are in L.A., you know, and, and some, a lot in Orange County as well. All right. So we have carpools. Amen. I know um, Sister Terry's organized with the ladies. I think there might be one more spot in their car, okay, for um, the ladies. But then Brother Paul can coordinate for both men and ladies as well for um, the camp meeting. I know the ladies uh, shooting for at least Friday, right? So Friday, um, and then Brother Paul, is it just Friday? Good to do try to do Thursday night and Friday night. Okay, so come see Brother Paul if you need a ride for Thursday night and Friday night, or Thursday or and Friday night. He will help you out, Amen. Because it's going to be a blessing in Jesus' name to see a lot of others joining together, Amen. That believe believe in the Lord in Jesus name and the doctrine that apostles doctrine in Jesus name. And so that is in, um, which city is that again, pastor Riverside <laughs> it's in Riverside. So, um, check your calendar for more details that is covered, um, on your calendar. And they also have morning sessions. If you're not working Thursday morning, Friday morning, they're good sessions. I plan to join, um, um, some of the sessions that talk about, you know, um, how to deal with a uh, gender thing issues, how to, how to deal with blended families and all that stuff. So some good stuff there for us to learn. Amen. How to love, amen. H how to share the love of God, to be a witness to all, amen. Cause God wants to save all, right? He's not a respective person. So I want to grow. Amen. And so, um, join us. Um, we will be there um, all the days. The La Chica family will be there all the days, and Brother Paul as well. So 
any questions, come see him for that as well to help you out in Jesus' name. And then I also want to give a heads up that we will have ladies' conference in July. I'll give you all those details, but it's in Bellflower. Um, it's a Friday. We usually go Friday night, July 22nd, and I do want to say that we also have fellowship afterwards. Amen. We're going to have a great time, ladies, so we'll spread the word. However many carpools we need, we'll do it, okay, because it's going to be a great time in the Lord um, for the ladies. And then we also have our youth camp, amen, for our young Young adults and our youth, that will be July 29 and 30. We'll give you more information on that when we get more details. And um, praise God. God is good. And I also want, to, so I'm going to ask, um, is it Brother Paul? Are you taking up the tithe and offering to please come right now and great things ahead in the service in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. How are you this morning? Can we all stand? Let's get our hearts ready for to bring up our tithe and offering this morning. Today's verse or passage comes from James chapter 2, verse 17. It says, even so faith, if it had not worked, is dead, being alone. Now, I believe that true faith consists of two things. Basically, it must produce a doers in the kingdom. And secondly, it must inspire action to overtly demonstrate one's obedience to God. So it could be example for yourself, and it could be also example for the others and encouraging them. Now, today I want to be a little honest with you. Uh, and talk about myself and what I have learned, what, I, what God has uh, given me through many years of faithful tithing. You know, just like you sometimes, tithing liberally, liberally, <laughs> freely challenges me. It challenges me sometimes, you know. But I learned that through giving, it also makes me grow. God teaches me things. Uh, giving can sometimes stretch us out of our comfort zones. But in that stretching, I feel that we inch ourselves spiritually closer to God's heart. Now, or what I call the true faith. So I challenge you this morning and try it out, my brothers and sisters. Reach out closer to the clo uh, reach out closer to that true faith. Give and give generously until it feels little discomfort or uncomfortable. Because where there is discomfort, there is generally some special gain of spiritual gain that that it comes with. Now let me give you some indication of what I've been through. Uh, basically, I've been in church for about over 12, 15, almost 15 years. And from the gate go, I was a faith forgiver. It took me a long time before God taught me one thing. He gave me one wisdom. And what he did was that he broke the tie between me and my love for money. God has given me freedom from money. For he has given me everything for many times. Every time I gave more than I'm supposed to, you know what? He always gave me double, three, four, five times. So it happens too much to, for me to say, God, is it going to happen again? And you know what? I want you to experience that with me right now. So come, give it freely, okay? And watch, uh, watch and see what God could do. He will open up the heaven's window and pour out your gift, pour out your blessing. That's more than what you have a place to bear in Jesus' name. Oh, bring up your, as you bring up your gift and offerings, tithe and offerings, love on one another. And for you electronic giver, there's Brother Jimmy over here to serve you as well in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. 
want to thank all of you, faithful givers of the Lord. Amen. And next care team will give you an update of the balance of the building that has been dwindling down rapidly. And we're thankful. My The amount escapes me, but it's not a lot anymore, so we thank God for that. Amen. And today we're going to hear from three preachers, but before that we do have a special presentation for all our fathers in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Would you thank God for that? In Jesus' name, I pray that it encourages you. Brother Paul, would you come? Amen. Before Brother Paul comes, the Bible talks about what the Apostle Paul mentioned in 1 Corinthians 4, 15. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. you Would you worship the Lord right now? Father, we thank you for what you're going to do today, God, through the word, the ministry of the word. We bless you this morning, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can you raise your hands? Let's worship on the Lord right now, for he's your almighty Father. Oh, the almighty Father, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your spirit, Lord God. I thank you for not giving up on us, Lord God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Let me echo what was just shown on the overhead and say happy Father's Day to everybody. And just, you know what, all you men, all you fathers, you are special today. You are special. This is your day. We are here to celebrate. I know we have food for you, and I do believe we have a photo booth today, right? As well as gifts for you. So come and join us after service, and let's eat, let's celebrate, and let's fellowship in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That begs to ask the question, the word father. Better yet, what makes a true father? Have you ever thought about that? Now, Father, Father's in here. Now, listen to me and answer me a question here. Would you do anything for your family? Would you do anything for your family? Would you do, would you do, if you got, if you're sick, if your kid got sick, and if doctors told you that you need a $500,000 $500, treatment, would you sell your house? Would you cash in your 401k? And even far as, would you give a part of your body like an organ donor for your kid's sake? Now, you know what? You will do ultimately anything just like I would to preserve their life. You will sacrifice as much as you need to to save your family's life. And I just want to know, that's what you would do as a father. That is what we call true father or, or fatherly love to your kids. Now, I mean, anybody could say they're fathers, right? Anybody could say they're fathers. But, you know, that's not good enough for us, I'm concerned. You know, you must back that up with your fatherly love characteristics. 
And I, and I start thinking about that. And I start wondering, what would that fatherly love is all about? Now, of course, I turn to the dictionaries to check out what the de definitions are. Believe it or not, the word, word love in Greek definition, there's about four or five of them. I don't recall how many. One of those, thing, one of those definitions is called agape love. We talk about agape love already. We've been taught by Pastor and Sister Lachika. It's an unconditional love from God. That's what it is. And, but they defined it as self-sacrificial love. Now, Greek definition, unlike the English definition, not only does it emphasize the importance of emotional feelings, but in addition, the word connotates the importance of conscious action as well. Now, John 3.16, sister, if you could put that up for me. John 6, 3.16 say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God gave, God loved the world. That means God loved us. That's what that means. That he gave his begotten son. Now what happened to his son? He was a sacrificial lamb. He paid the price for our sins on the Calvary. So God has, uh, God has really fulfilled this love called agape love. It's a self-sacrifice he made for our sake in Jesus' name. Now, unfortunately, most of the churches in the United States today operates love for the love based on the weak English definition which calls only for the emotional emotional feelings they say and, and then that definition is all over the map it goes from I love ice cream to I love Starbucks to extreme as I love my God leaving the important factor out that is that is conscious action that we call self-sacrifice. I believe that their intention is just as good as anybody else. I think they do genuinely love their God. But due to their faults or lack of teaching, they never, they had never or never will experience the level of love that God intended for them to receive or experience. Now, 2 Corinthians 6.18 says, And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, said the Lord the Almighty. Oh, church, he wants to be our father. He's, he's already determined that he's going to be our father. He has already paid the price upon the cross. He wants to be our father, which means I take that as he wants to be our personal gods. That's what he wants to be. For me and you, and only me and you, can you wrap your mind around that? He wants to be our personal father. He wants to be our personal God. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. Okay, now I know. I know you're thinking. You're thinking, say, man, I'm not worthy for that. I'm not good enough for him. I don't deserve him. But you know what? But don't listen to the enemy. That is a lie that's coming from the enemy. Bible says that you are the apple of his eyes. His masterpiece in making. You are the mighty clay. He is, he is your potter. He went as far as saying that, oh, my, father, my father's house had many rooms. So if we're not so, I would have to tell you that I go to, pre I go to prepare a place for you in heaven. He's got a place for you in heaven right now. He's preparing. That's how far and that's how much he loves you. That's how much he wants to be your father. On the Luke cha uh, chapter 11 verse 13. If you then who are evil know how to give good gift unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask. Hallelujah Jesus. Thank you Lord. Oh, his plan from the start is to give you his kingdom. His plan from the start is to give you a kingdom. As a child of God, 
You will inherit the kingdom of God. As you could see the Holy Spirit. It's just a down payment for the kingdom. Ikaya my shoko lo shalalama. Oh, Luke chapter 12, 32 says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He's going to give you the kingdom. Oh, you can count on that. It's his covenant. It's his promise in Jesus' name. Come on now. What do you got to lose, huh? What do you hold, what's holding you back right now? Your salvation is at hand. Your king, his kingdom is at hand. Oh, you already been given the down payment of the Holy Ghost. God is committed. Are you? Are you committed like he is? Oh, don't let the enemy derail you with, his, with the God's will. Don't let enemy deceive you with his lies. Of course he's going to tell you, you're not worth it. Oh, you're worthless. You know what I got to say that? First thing first, stop listening to that. Stop listening to the enemy. Stop entertaining what he's saying. Start rebuking the enemy's lie. Oh, he is a liar. I tell you, he is a liar. And he'll do everything, everything to get you to hell. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you know what? I got to tell you. You know, you may be right. You may be right. Our righteousness is as a filthy rags. That's what he says in the book of Isaiah, right? But our God is a redeemer, church. Our God is a redeemer. He is merciful God. His mercy is ever flowing. Oh, my Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. He says, come now and let us reason together. Say that the Lord, though your sins are as scarlet, scarlet, but they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, My dear children. 1 John chapter, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, I do believe it is. Or is it 1 through 5? I'm not sure, sister. It says, my children, I write this to, to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with our Father. Oh, you have a lawyer in heaven that's waiting for you, my brother. Don't worry about your sins. Don't worry about your Just repent. You have an advocate in heaven waiting for you. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He is the righteous one. Ikayama. Oh, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And it's not only for our sins, but also sins of the whole world. Oh, he is up there. He is our lawyer in Jesus' name. Oh, you have repented. You have been baptized in his name. And you have been filled with his Holy Ghost. So what if you made a mistake? So what if you made a mistake? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> because remember, the blood has been shed in the Calvary. For all our sins been already cleansed. All meaning, all sins from the past, all sins from the present, and all sins from the future. It's been, it's been cleansed. Oh, yes, your future sin is already covered under his blood. All you have to do is just repent. Just repent, and you will be cleansed in Jesus' name. Oh, he is your redeemer. He is your redeemer. His mercy, remember, his mercy is sufficient for all your sins, no matter how bad. No matter how big it is, no matter what you did, take them to the cross. For where there is a cross, there is cleansing. For where there is a cross, there is your forgiveness. There is your rest. There is your shelter. There is your refuge. That's what the cross is. Your home, your safe place. Your cross is your home. In Jesus' name, your sins, how big, how bad, how small, whether it's in the past, present, or future, you are cleansed. You are forgiven. Said at the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. The book of Romans says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
this is how much he loves you. This is how much he loves us. He died for us while we were sinning. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's like forgiving somebody while they're robbing you. You know? So that's what he did. He, 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 that's how humble he was. He basically forgave us while we were sinning. Oh, somebody raise your hand right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for your mercy that's ever covering, Lord God. That is ever flowing, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I will close with this this morning. It comes from Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. It says, I will tell you of decree. Now, decree is an official order. It's an authority. Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Oh, here's the good news, Joe. Here's good news, church. God has already claimed you as his sons and daughters. Oh, he has already paid the price on the Calvary while we were sinners. In fact, he's already in heaven preparing a place for you. He's already giving you the down payment of the inheritance right now. His Holy Ghost with the promise of his kingdom. Oh, for to regain, to reign with him through eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, somebody receive that word right now somebody receive that revelation raise your hands raise your hand to the Lord oh receive the word hold on to it put it in hide it in your heart don't let it fall to the ground oh have a made up mind today have a made up mind for rest of your life that it is your he is your true father he is your only father oh father of our fathers all loving all living all everlasting i thank you jesus i claim you lord god you are my father lord god i receive you i thank you lord i thank you for what you are doing lord in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful presence of the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. You know, what is the best way? To have a close personal relationship with the Heavenly Father is to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Because that's when you become part of the family of God. That's when you take on the name of Jesus Christ. And when you are a family, you have access to the Father. Either you are adopted, like we as Gentiles are adopted into the kingdom of God, right? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's how you have a close personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, uh, the boiling point of the water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So, there was a student in the class. So, the teacher asks him, What's the boiling point? He said, that's when my father sees my scorecard. But father is still forgiving, right? He will, he will encourage his son or daughter, you know, to do better next time. So the father is a mentor 
But one thing, Father is not, he's not an ATM machine. I don't know if some of you think that he is. <laughs> but he's more than that. Amen. You know, our nation is in such a serious trouble. I was talking to someone at work, and he calls himself an atheist. I said, you know, the reason we have all these school shootings and killing and murder is because America has lost its moral conscience. And he said, you say that because you're a Christian. I said, but am I wrong? And he had no answer to that. You know, there were 250 shootings just this year, according to the Washington Post. 41 just in June 22. 18.5 million children are living without their fathers. 25%, and that's a 25% of, of the total population, right? 85% of them have behavioral disorders. 70% of the adolescents are in drug or alcohol programs. And 1.4 million identify themselves as transgender. And we are the most fatherless nation in the world. We are in serious trouble, folks. Even the heathen, some of the heathen nations don't have that kind of a statistics. But that's because the role of the father and family has been blurred without going too much into politics. We know who those people are, right? See, I'm not going to give you the name of the leader. He's the leader of a very powerful, a nuclear power for power in the world. And he said, in reference to the transgender and LGBT, he said that this is a crime against humanity, and he was absolutely right. The reason I'm not giving you the name is because it's a controversial name right now, but I can tell you after the service if, if you want to know. But it is important. Is that presentation ready? Okay. As most of you know that I am not much of a preacher, I'm more of a teacher, so that's, that's where we are going to go. So in, we call father, and in Hebrew, it's Abba. Either way you spell it, even though in Hebrew they write from right to left, but in this case, either way you read it, it's, it's, it's the same, right? And then that's the Greek, next one. But in Hebrew, it's the father is more than just a name. See, Abba is an Aramaic word referring to heavenly, biological, and adopted fathers. See, in Greek, it is written as Abba and mentioned three times in the New Testament. Mark 14, 36, Romans 8, 15, and Galatians 4, 6. See, Abba does not only mean father, it connotes a much deeper relationship between fathers and children. It signifies intimacy, trust, confidence, and obedience. It entails all of that in just one name. So this is a conversation between a Jewish father and his son at Tel Aviv, David Ben-Gurion Airport in Israel. He says, when I ask you to do something, I want you to call me Abba. So Jewish children are taught from their childhood to respect their fathers and call them fathers, not dude, hey bud. <laughs> they are taught to call them father because it is a matter of respect. And it is a close personal relationship. But it, it is not a one-way street, right? It's, it's a two-way relationship. It's, you need to respect me, but respect does not come without obedience. So the children also need to be obedient to their father and give them the respect that they deserve and return father is supposed to provide and protect. And Jesus Christ was the perfect example 
who gave absolute respect to his father, but yet he was obedient. See, he said, Abba, Father. And in Hebrew, it's Abba, Abi, which means Father. And then he, he gives absolute clarity and says, My Father. Not only just Father, and he says, My Father. That represents the close intimacy that he had with the Father. So in Hebrew, when the word is repeated twice, it gives additional meanings and it gives more strength to what is being said before. For example, in, in Hebrew, the word small means katan. But if you say katan, katan, it means very small. So when the Hebrew words are repeated twice, it gives extra meaning. And that's where he's saying, not only father, but he's saying my father. He's personalizing it. He's saying, you are my father. I am intimate with you. You know my very inner being. Amen? And he said, all things are possible with you. That represents confidence. That Jesus Christ, Christ had absolute confidence in his father. That he said, all things are possible with you. In other words, my dad, you are so strong and so powerful that you can do anything. How many of you see your dad as a superman? Amen? But that's how Jesus Christ looked at his heavenly father, who was the God of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe, who could do all things. He said, take this cup away from me. That represents trust. See, if he's the God of heaven and earth, then he had the power to take away this trust. But then look at the next one. Nevertheless, not what I will but what you will, and that is the sign of obedience. So Jesus Christ had all of that. He had intimacy with the Father. He had confidence in his Father. He had trust in his Father, and yet he was obedient like a humble servant. See, characteristics of a godly father. He is a reflection of, of his heavenly father. He is a reflection of Jesus Christ. It is how Jesus Christ treated his father and father treated him. And that is the relationship he will have with his children. Amen. So let's look at some of the characteristics of the father. Father is faithful. And there failed not aught of any good things which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel, and all came to pass. God remained faithful to Israel, even when Israel was not faithful to God. And that is the quality of the father. He's always faithful to his children. Amen. Father is affectionate. He says, behold, what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. I mean, even when we are not living our life the way we should be in accordance with the laws of the Father, He still loved us enough to send His Son to die for us, to shed His blood for our sins, even when we were not living for Him. Amen? That is true love. Father is a teacher. Who is the man who fears the Lord? He God will instruct him in the way he should choose. So when you have the Holy Spirit, God is going to use you. He's going to direct you. He's going to help you. He's going to teach you. He's going to instruct you. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will lead you into all the truth. Amen? Father is holy, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Father sets the example of holiness in his house. And father is not a dictator. He's a leader. He will set the example for his children and for children to follow him. Father encourages. See, children can have disappointment. They can have broken relationships. They can go through trials, difficult times, but Father is always there to encourage. He says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. 
Yes, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Father will guide you with his righteous right hand. And Father, who is the reflection of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, will guide you with an own hand because he has the power of the Holy Spirit working in him. And it is through that spirit he is going to guide you in the godly ways. Remember, God gave very specific instructions in the law to teach their children about the laws of God. And they are taught before they go to bed in the morning, in the afternoon, and night to read or recite the Shema verse, which means, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The Lord is one. Amen? So let's look at a little bit of that scripture. Look, there are seven things that are mentioned in that scripture. That's the perfect number of God. Amen? It says, Fear not. Father will tell you, don't be afraid. I'm here for you. I'm going to help you. He says, I'm with you. When the children know that their father is with them and he's going to be there, they can go to bed at night, sleep peacefully, and wake up in the morning giving glory to God that they have a godly father. Amen? Be not dismayed. When the disappointments of life comes, the father will be there and comfort his children. He says, do not be dismayed. I'm here for you. I will strengthen you. The father will strengthen his children through guidance, through love, through mercy, through compassion, everything that Jesus Christ did for us. Amen? And he said, yes, I will help you. Jesus Christ said, I will not leave you comfortless. The same way the father will let his children know that they are not comfortless. He's always there for them. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The father will always lift up his children in prayer before God. Amen. He will make sure that his children are before the throne of God every day because they are still growing. They're still learning. But Father is the one who is going to cover them like the Heavenly Father covers us with his, with his wings and his love. Amen. Father is a role model. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. See, Father will set the example in the house for his children. Father will pray. Father will fast. Father will read the Bible. Father will be faithful to the mother of his children. Father will be faithful to his children in teaching them and guiding them and loving them and showing them, but yet chastise them as well. See, most of us want the love, but we don't want the chastisement. But if the father does not have true love for you, he's not going to chastise you. Amen? So this is all what I just told you. So let's go through it together. Father is? Father is? Father is? Father is? And he's, and he's a role model. So... <laughs> So this is the statement from General Douglas MacArthur. He was the commander of the South Pacific during the Second World War. And he said, by profession, I'm a soldier and take great pride in that fact. But I am also prouder, uh, in infinitely prouder to be a father. A soldier destroys in, all, in order to build, but father only builds and never destroys. And I will leave you with that statement. Amen. Let's just worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you have just imparted and spoken to us, Lord. 
Lord, let us not leave, O oh Lord, today the same way that we walked into. But, Lord, we allow you to transform every single part of our heart, every single part of our mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, would you just begin to lift up your hands right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I allow you to change me, O oh God. Some of you are going to leave differently. You're going to change with a new mind, change with a new spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, would you just begin to shout hallelujah and would you just begin to thank the Lord? Come on, I think it's good that we just keep on doing that right now. I honor you, God. I thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' name. There is a lot of faith in this place. But I believe there is a, a portion of our faith, or just faith in general, that still needs to be activated. So is it okay if we, we pray one more time, but this time, let's just allow that faith within us to be activated. Let's, let's not have any room for doubt in our mind because all we have to do is just believe and God will do it. If he has spoken it, we don't have to make it happen. We don't have to create it. We just have to believe. So right now, can we just begin to lift up our voices? Father, by the authority of your word and by the power that is in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, I release a spirit of faith. I take dominion and authority, O oh Lord, over every spirit of doubt, over every spirit of fear, and I loose the love of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're going to receive your miracle today because God is allowing us to receive it. He has already spoken it. All we have to do is just believe in the name of Jesus we cling to your word father in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus how many of you believe that you are a child of God if you are a child of God that means you have a father and your father is the Lord Jesus Christ he is the father and so it's very powerful I remember one day I was I kind of got into a, a discussion with the Lord and I began to talk to him and I said you know Lord I'm, I'm hungry after your word I'm I'm thirsty after your spirit I just want to know you and the way I was approaching him sister Ruth Ann it was like I believed he was withholding it from me because I wasn't getting that flow instantaneously. And I was kind of just wrestling with God at this moment. I just began to say, God, I'm hungry after your, after your word. I'm, I'm thirsty after your spirit. I want to know you. And I was approaching it in, in a way almost as of begging God because there was a part of me that believed he was withholding it from me. But then the Lord began to speak to me after I stopped talking, and he told me, he said, do you believe I am your father? And I said, yes. He said, he asked me, do you believe you are my son? And I said, yes. Then he said, then why on earth would I withhold bread, which is the word of God, and why in the world would I withhold the water, the living water, if you are my child? If you're a father, why in the world would you not have the desire to feed your kids? And so we have to, to come with a faith that says, you know what? I believe that my father wants to give me this. Why? I'm his child. I'm no longer a, a, a fatherless Gentile. I am a Jew by faith. I am a spiritual Jew, so that means my Father wants to provide for me. And sometimes we, we don't believe that we are His children, but if uh, sometimes you, I, this is going to sound a little bit strange, but just bear with me. We, we sometimes, we, we try to come up with a formula on how to have great faith. We, we, we make uh, a, a to, um, 
just a little formula, a little equation on how to have great faith. But really, in my opinion, all I need to do to have great faith is just believe that I'm his child and he's my father. Because if it's his will and he's my father, I know that he loves me because I'm his child. And so if he said it, he's going to do it because he's my father. And the Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. And so for these next few moments, we're going to, by the help of the Holy Ghost, we're going to talk about faith. Now, the Bible says... Abraham in Hebrews 11, 8 through 10, if you could put that up, please, sister, says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Next verse, please. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Next verse, please. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now, this is a powerful chapter. I was, Lord led me to read it last night. And when I was reading it, you could read it for yourself after service. But it just listed all these things that, that people did in the word of God. And it listed all these names, all the, all the people. If you were to say their names, you would automatically know who, who they were, and a lot of it just said that by faith, Moses, by faith, David, by faith, Sarah, by faith, Abraham, and it is so important that every, everything that we do is in faith. Abraham went when he was called to go out into a place after he should receive an inheritance, obeyed. Why? He believed God. And so some, sometimes I, I, don't, I mean, it, the word is revelatory, but I'm, I, I feel just to preach faith because really it's not, it's not rocket science. It's not hard. All we really have to do is just believe. I remember, um, I, I love what Sister Lachika does. She's, she, she's about teaching and making it simple. And so... What we're going to do today, we're just going to make it simple. We're just going to preach faith. Because all, all we really have to do to see a miracle is just believe. I don't know if you could put, find that uh, scripture, Sister Terry. These signs shall follow them that believe. It's, it's Mark 16, 16. Thank you, Pastor. Seven, 17. We, we're going to find out who, which one it is. But it's, it's powerful Hold on, it's, it's powerful because that scripture, 17 it is, praise God. We're going we're gonna to go to that right now. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. It does not say these signs shall follow them that are preachers or pastors or prophets or apostles all you have to do is believe and so we we sometimes try to overcomplicate things and say oh you can only uh brother so-and-so has to pray for you in order for you to receive a miracle i don't i don't care who you are who prays for you if they have the Holy Ghost? The same Holy Ghost that is in the people that operate in the gifts of the Spirit. It is the same Holy Ghost that's in you if you have the evidence of speaking in tongues. And so I believe I don't have to fly all the way to, where, where does Brother Mocus live? Illinois or Alabama? Ind Indiana. Oh, close. Indiana, I, I believe I don't have to fly all the way to Indiana to receive a miracle. You know what I can do? I can go up to Brother Luke and say, hey, I got pain in my body. Can you pray for me? And if he prays for me, it will happen. Why? It doesn't say if, if so-and-so prays for you. It just says if you would just believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Next verse, please. okay 
verse 18. They shall take up serpents. Keep in mind, this is, this is only, the only qualification to receive this is to just believe. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. You want to know what's so powerful about this scripture? It just goes to show that God's no respecter of persons. It can be, it can be applicable to somebody that has been in the church for 40 years, and it can be applicable to somebody that just got saved that day. Why? The only thing is you just need to believe. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. There is no variable in that scripture. It doesn't say they might recover. They shall recover. Some of you... Some of you don't really believe that because you're, you're thinking in your mind, well, I prayed for people. How come they didn't get healed? But here's the thing. If it's the Lord's will, he will heal. All we have to do is just believe that he's going to do it. Sometimes our intellectual and analytical brain gets in the way of a miraculous move of the spirit. Because we're, we're thinking in our head, how is this going to happen? We're, we're thinking in our mind, if, if I pray for them, what if it doesn't happen? And, and one thing that I've learned going into the Philippines and seeing God heal people and seeing the miraculous, I, one thing that I've learned, you got to throw away that analytical brain of yours. you got to throw away, well, what if it doesn't happen? What, what, will, what will happen if I lay hands on that sister and, and they don't get healed? And I'm pretty sure all of us have thought that thought. For some reason, sometimes when we pray for people, we think, well, what if nothing happens? But here's the thing. If God has sent you and you have heard his voice to pray for that person, you don't have to make it happen. You just have to believe and God will make it happen. And so if we want to see the miraculous one, we have to believe, we have to have faith, but number two, we have to throw away the, the analytical side of our mind and the intellectual side of our mind because if, if we're trying to figure out, okay, how's this going to happen? How am I going to lay my hand? At what degree should I angle my hand to pray for them? When, when you start trying to analyze it, God's just waiting for you to stop and so that he can do it. I've seen people, I've, there's this one moment um, in Alaska. I was actually, it was when Sister Faith and uh, Brother Alex got married. I was, I was there uh, the day after their wedding at their Sunday service. And this lady went up to me. And she, she just said, I have, I have pain in my body. Can you, can you pray for me? And I asked her, okay. Where's the pain? She said, I've had a back surgery, and my back has been hurting. And the side of me, I don't even remember how it even happened, but in those types of situations, for, for me personally, when, when the miraculous is operating, I rarely figure out, okay, what do you want me to do? And this, is, this may sound weird, but I rarely think. Because there are times when God is moving so powerfully, I don't question if God's going to do it. There's just a faith that just begins to sh shocks. And I heard, I heard one, one man of God, he began to talk about how God uses him. And he said, you have to have a faith that is like electricity. That the moment God speaks, you don't even take a second to question. You just go there in faith. And so when, when God began to deal with me about this, I said, you know, Lord, I'm going to try this out. This lady, she, she said, I, I have pain in my back. Uh, I've had back surgery. And so I said, okay, well, I'm going to pray for you. And so we, we prayed. It was not a, you know, I was not yelling, screaming in the mic and just saying, Lord Jesus, seal this person. Because honestly, the volume of your voice doesn't, is not the gauge for your anointing. And so I just prayed a simple prayer with her. I just said, it was, it was not a prayer out of hype. It was a prayer out of love. 
And when you have love, faith can operate and flow freely. Some people can't really operate um, in, a, in a way that it flows because the love of God needs to grow in them. But I remember we, I was with this lady. I was, I was standing on the platform because there was a move of the Holy Ghost. And so she's, she's standing right there, and I, I, just, I prayed with her, and we just prayed. And then I told her, okay, I want you to, or I asked her, I think, how, how does the pain, is there still pain in your body? She began to test out her back. She began to feel it. And then she said, some of the pain is left. And so I said, praise God. And then she said, but there's still a little bit of pain. And so I felt led. I said, okay, I believe that God wants to do a complete work. And I believe some of you, you've received a healing, but you have not yet received a complete work. God wants to do that today. God wants to do that today, sister. God wants to do it. But I, I, was, I was seeing this lady, and she, so we prayed one more time. And that second time we prayed, I, I just felt led. I said, why don't you go take a victory lap around the church? And so she began to go. She took a lap around the church. And when she came back, when she made her way around, I just began to see tears flow off of her, flow from her eyes. And I'm like, okay, this is either really good, it's really bad. It's either there's no more pain or it's so bad she's crying. And so I'm like, okay, Lord. I'm like bracing for impact. I was like, okay. And she goes, I don't understand. I don't know why, but there's no more pain. And all we have to do is just have faith. Somebody just begin to lift one of your hands up. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release a spirit of faith in this place. God wants to do it in the name of Jesus. There's nothing too hard for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you would just believe God could do it in the name of Jesus Christ. I've, I've had encounters with people when, when one thing that I learned about the gifts of the Spirit, and I've learned from other people, is you have to... Pastor, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm okay. But this is what I feel, the rhema that's coming to my spirit. You just can't think. You have to let God do it. You have to get your mind out of the way. Because when you start thinking, well, what if it doesn't happen? What if I pray for them? Should I pray for them? What do I say? I notice the moments where I stop all of that and I just be led of the spirit and, and obedient and I just go. That's where the miraculous happens. I believe sometimes we, we don't see the miraculous because sometimes we get in the way. Because our mind is thinking, well, what if this happens? What if it doesn't happen? And I've, I, I remember I would, um, I would listen to a lot of stories of, you know, people being healed. I would listen to a lot of uh, messages of people being used mightily in healing. And there came something inside of me that rose in my spirit, and I said, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm thankful for that you're doing that for these people. I'm thankful that you've healed them, and I'm thankful that you use those men of God. But there was something that was kind of stirred within me and said, Lord, if you could use them and you're no respecter of persons, you could use me. And sometimes we, we reserve our miracle for the, the guest speaker. We sometimes, we only have faith when, when we know, okay, the person that's going to pray for me, they've seen people get healed. But I believe if somebody were to get the Holy Ghost right now, and they were about to get, and they got baptized right now. And if there was some some of you that were sick in your body, and that person were to pray with faith, you would be healed, because God's no respecter of persons. Church, we have to stop trying to figure out the miraculous. We have to stop trying to analyze it and just believe, because if we just have faith, I I, I love. 
the the power of faith because it's God does not make it complicated. And, and faith is so important. And one thing that God dropped in my spirit yesterday, and it created such a increase of my faith. And he began to talk to me. He said, he began to kind of just take me back to the book of Genesis. And he began to tell me, he said, in Genesis 1, I, I created the whole world. But after the initial creation of the world, I'm not done creating. And I believe that the even scientists, they, they say that uh, the earth is expanding still. So God is still creating things. He is still at work. And it was interesting because I'm, there was something in my spirit. And he, he began to tell me, he said, you know, you should believe for the miraculous. Because I'm not done creating. And, and sometimes if we would just believe that the same voice, the same word, the same rhema that spoke what you see, this whole world into existence, that that same voice can speak and you can be healed. And, and so many times we, again, our, our, our mind tries to get in the way. We, we try to analyze it and say, you know what, um, maybe if I, what if, well, what if it doesn't happen? What if, what if this goes wrong? What if they don't get healed? And I believe what God's about to do, I'm, I'm, I can't pray for every single one of you here. I don't have enough arms. I only have two. But I believe the person next to you, God can use them to pray for you and you can be healed. I believe that with every single thing inside of me. Why? We have to start believing the word of God. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many of you believe? Just raise your hand. So all of you should be able to, God can use you to lay hands on somebody and they shall recover. It's, it's not hard for God to do. And it's, God is so powerful that he can just speak and it will happen. Roman, Romans 10, 17, if you could put that up, please, Sister Terry. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I believe. And so. This, this scripture is so powerful. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. That, that's, that's where some people. Kind of get mixed up. Because. They say. Oh I believe that God's going to do this. And they begin to name stuff. And they begin to claim it. And I begin to think well. Did you get a word from God for that? Because in order to have faith to believe something, you have to hear a word from God first. There are some times and, and the multiple situations where I have prayed for somebody and they necessarily didn't get healed. And I begin to think, Lord, why didn't they get healed? And then I'm reminded of the scripture which reminds me, I need a word from God first. So somebody say a word from God. You can only have faith if you have a word from God. And so what's so powerful is all you have to do is just hear God speak. And if you just cling to that word and you believe it, it will happen. Because I, I love this. It's, it's really not rocket science. It's it's not something that's hard to operate in. I believe that every single person here, you can operate in the gift of faith. You can operate in the working of miracles. Why? God wants to do it because there is a lost and a hurting world out there. And I believe when, when the world sees the miraculous and begins to see for themselves that God truly is real, Pastor, I believe we, we couldn't keep the baptistry lid on. I believe we, we couldn't let the altars be empty anymore. Why? When, when people see a true demonstration of the Holy Ghost, 
something begins to change. Something begins to change in that climate. And Galatians 5, 6, it says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So all you have to do is have faith. Throw, throw, don't try to figure out and just have love. Why? I, I believe, I, I remember something that the Lord spoke to me not too long ago, and it was people that have let the love of God flow in them and have let the love of God flow through them. They become more spiritually sensitive in the gifts. Why? Because the gifts and, and, and miracles, they all work by love. If, if, if I pray for somebody and I don't have compassion for them, and, and I'm coming with a spirit that is not of love, I don't think a miracle is going to happen. Because it has to be by love. And I remember there was this one time I was praying uh, for somebody to be healed. And it was just such an extreme compassion I felt upon them. It was not me wanting to pray for them so I could see something happen. Or so that everybody could shout and go crazy. That, that was not the intention. But it was... I saw the need of that person, and I saw, and I began to think to myself, Lord, don't leave them like this. They're hurting in their body. And some of you, you're not hurting in your body, but you're hurting in your mind, and you're hurting in your emotions. And God is saying, I'm your father, and what makes you think I want you to be left in that condition? I wonder if we could just begin to close our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody just begin to pray in tongues right now. That's it. Somebody just begin to let the love of God be upon them. Sakata la borroco se atarabaha. He la borroco se atarabaha se ete. Some of you have stopped believing in the love of God because you've gone through some things that have hurt you and buried your emotions. But God is saying, I want to heal. I'm your father. It is not my will for you to be left in that torment. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's your father. And you're his child. All you got to do is just believe. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why don't we just begin to pray right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit oh Lord of pride oh God. I bind every spirit that would try to get in the way of what you want to do in this place. I take dominion and authority over it in the name of Jesus Christ. I release your agape love in this place. There's somebody in this place. God's not going to say your name. But there's a part of you that has stopped believing that God loves you and has stopped believing in the love of God because you feel like you drifted so far away from his will that you cannot get back in. And for about a couple months now, you've been kind of on the fence and nobody really knows about it and you've been kind of just going through life, just barely making it. But what I see right now, the Lord, He's showing me for you. He's looking at you and His arms are wide open. His arms are not crossed. 
His back is not facing you. His arms are wide open. And he wants you to come back and he wants you to reconcile with him. And he's saying, come, let us reason together. Come, let us reason together. If you believe that right now, would you just begin to say, God, I want to be in your loving arms. I receive your love. Come on, if you believe that word, would you just begin to lift up both of your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Just begin to lift both of your hands. If you believe that, that's for you. You have not drifted so far that you cannot get back to him. It is not the will of God for you to distance yourself from his love. If God is leading you, would you find somebody and just begin to lay hands on them? Don't just pray with them, pray for them. say you have not walked away so far that you cannot come back come on that's the love of God that you feel the miraculous is the love of God it's what causes you to be healed it's what causes you to be delivered come on would you just begin to lift up both of your hands you are not so damaged, God cannot heal you anymore. He andarabo shantaye. You have not made so many mistakes in your life that you cannot be healed. That is a lie from the adversary. God wants to heal you. God wants the andarabo shantaye. I bind every spirit of stubbornness, God, and I loose, O oh Lord, your love in this place. If you sincerely want God's love, would you make your way to this altar right now? Jesus come quickly if you sincerely want the love of God would you make your way to the altar right now God's about to do something powerful in the name of Jesus he say come quickly in the name of Jesus if you sincerely want God's love begin to come to this altar right now if you're praying with somebody, urge them to come with you to this altar. In the name of Jesus, come on. If you have the love of God, if you desire the love of God, would you just begin to come to this altar right now? altar right now. God's going to do a miraculous work. If you've received healing, the Lord is telling you today that you can pray for somebody and they can be healed. If you've received healing, you're able to impart healing. Those of you that have testified Wednesday and today, I release you to minister and pray with faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to exercise by reason of use. Begin to exercise by reason of use. 
building up your most holy faith. Begin to pray for somebody and begin to impart healing that you have received. Freely you have received, freely give. Lay hands on them. I release you to minister those that are being prayed for. Let your faith be engaged. Let your faith be intertwined with theirs and begin to believe on your heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. Come on, open up your spirit to God right now. I bind every spirit that says you're unworthy. I bind every spirit of infirmity upon your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every spirit of infirmity off of you. I command you to be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, that same minister right now. Robo si anda raba kanta ya, hi alamando robo si anda mahaya. Come on, that shit let loose right now. Come on, that shit in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, that shit just a little bit further. Minister to somebody else right now. Those of you that receive healing, minister to somebody else. Oh, be led of the Holy Ghost and pray with somebody else in Jesus' name. Come on, that's it. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Some of you, you, you don't necessarily need physical healing, but you need emotional healing. That's for you right now in the name of Jesus. Just begin to lift up both of your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. It is for you today. Come on, the Lord is not far from you. The Lord is not far from you. I lose, oh Lord, victory in the emotions right now. I lose healing in your emotions right now. I lose healing in your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, if you have the love of God, it will happen. If you just believe, it will happen. That's it. Let faith arise in you. Let faith arise in you. Come on, just begin to open up your mouth. Don't let it be closed right now. Begin to open up your mouth. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, that shit, the miraculous is happening right now. Just begin to open up your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, that shit, I believe, therefore I speak. That's it, just begin to open up your mouth. Come on, that shit out of your lips. Come on, let that word of faith begin to be released. Come on, that shit, release it right now. Miracles are right here in the name of Jesus. Come on, just a little bit further. Just begin to release it right now with your lips. Begin to open up your mouth. You got to open up your mouth. Come on, declare it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, 
Come on, be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Receive your liberty. Come on, that's it. There it is. Come on, that's it. Just begin to speak it out right now. Jesus' name. It was if there's any been a desire in you to be used in the gift of healing, would you come? The Bible says Galatians 5 6 faith which worketh by love. And I believe that's what we need to do, at least in this first stages, that we need to renew our love. For people. And I understand life happens and things happen to you, and unknowingly you have allowed your love for people to be eroded. Amen. So we need to pray right now in Jesus' name that we receive the love of God and we believe that He loves us. And freely we receive, freely we give, and we love other people. In the name of Jesus Christ, would you pray right now, Father? In the name of Jesus Christ, come on, in your own way, God hears your prayer to begin to love people more than ever before. In the name of Jesus Christ, to begin to love and care for people more than ever before. In the name of Jesus Come on, Christ. in the name of Jesus, receive the love of God. He convinced He loves you. And not only you, but He loves other people. Oh, our God so loved the world that while we were yet sinners, He died for the ungodly. He loves everybody. That Lord, your love resides in me because I have the Holy Ghost. The love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And miraculous signs and wonders shall follow you because you have the love of God flowing. You have the love of God flowing. It's flowing through you right now. Somebody believe that. Somebody believe that in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I have the love of God. Somebody say it. I have the love of God. I have the love of God. I've received the love of God. And I'm going to freely give the love of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. God wants to showcase you, his people, to minister to the lost and the hurting in the dying world. 
Jesus, when he was walking the streets, perceived, he said, somebody hath touched me, for I perceive virtue is gone out of me. And that virtue is within you right now. Would you believe it? Would you believe it right now? As you go about your day, you're going to perceive things. You're going to perceive things. The virtue that God has given you, will be, you'll begin to perceive that somebody needs it. And somebody's longing to be touched by God in your everyday life in the name of Jesus Christ. I release now, Lord, the impartation, God, of that faith, of virtue, Lord, to recite in your body for we are your body oh God just as you have virtue we are your body we possess that virtue in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus yeah sir number one believing that you and renewing your love because faith works by love. And just as you have been loved, believe God loves everybody. Even the vilest of sinners, God loves them. Secondly, God is waiting for us to be manifested, showcased to the lost and hurting world. And that's an everyday experience that you have virtue flowing out of you. And lastly, it says, Strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I want you just to pray for a little moment and as we pray, I want you to discern who God wants you to pray for in this building. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the gift of discernment rest upon these that have desired to be mightily used of you, Lord, that these signs indeed shall, it's an imperative verb, it shall follow them that believe, and we believe you, Lord. We believe you want to do it, and you want to do it through us in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you right now to go to somebody and exercise. Amen. Exercise by reason of use. Use the gift that you've been praying for right now. You have it. Use it right now. I release you to pray for somebody else right now. I release you to go to somebody and pray for them. Pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for them. Pray for somebody that needs healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, go to somebody right now. Go to somebody right now. Go to somebody in the name of Jesus and exercise and use it. You use it. Oh, so you won't lose it. Come on, you can't be fearful. You can't be fearful. It won't even take long. You should at least minister to two or three people right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You got to overcome timidity and fear that you're feeling. You got to go to them in the name of Jesus Christ. You got to exercise it in the name of Jesus Christ. You step out in faith. Step out in faith in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sister Christine, Sister Keisha, you need to minister to somebody else. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, by reason of use. Having your senses exercised to discern, to discern. Minister to somebody. Pray with somebody in the name of Jesus. It's going to flow through you as soon as you step out in faith, as soon as you step out expecting. 
Your Father wants to flow through you. Your Father wants to manifest His sons, His daughters to this lost and dying world. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name, that's right, pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with expectation. There's healing flowing out of you. There's virtue flowing out of your hands. By the laying of the hands, by the laying of the hands, virtue flows in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Complete your work, Father, through your body, through your people, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, yeah. I release your love here, Lord. I release your faith here, God. Faith that works by love in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Those of you that finished praying, those of you are praying, continue to pray. For those of you that finished praying for somebody, I want you to listen. When I first started in this, I'm so thankful for the people that I prayed for that gave me feedback. And I was so thankful that they told me what the Lord has done through me and it helped me grow and it helped my faith. So those of you that prayed for somebody, as Dana sings, I want you to go to that person and ask them and tell them, just be honest, did you feel something? Was there something that happened to you in your spirit or physically in your body as I prayed for you? Would you do that right now in Jesus' name? Just go to them and ask them, did something, did you feel something? Did God tell you something? Did did something happen to your body? And give them honest feedback in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 If you can be as specific as possible to help their faith. In Jesus name. In the name of Jesus. Strong meat belongs to them that are of full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised oh, to discern both good and evil for God is waiting and it is now time the earnest expectation oh, for the manifestation of the sons of God hallelujah thank God for using you right now Thank God for healing you right now. Thank God for using you. Through your hands, these signs shall follow them. This sign shall follow you as you step out in love for others and let the love of God flow through you and minister through you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for this great day that you have made. Thank you, O Lord, for this great day that you have made. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. And we love you, O God, just as you have loved us. And as you love us, Lord, we love 
others in the name of Jesus. Just simply believe that it is done. Simply believe it is done. God does a quick work. God does a quick work. The Lord has done a quick work. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just believe God has done the work in you. Just simply believe God has done the work in you. It is finished. Oh, He redeemeth the time. He redeems everything that was seemingly lost. And He restores. And He goes beyond restoration. He gives authority back. And He gives power back in Jesus' name. It is not a coincidence that the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy strength. It is the first and the greatest commandment and the second is equal unto it or is the same in value to love others as you love yourself. Jesus said upon these two hang or the foundation of all scripture is these two commandments. Loving God, loving others. We love God, I believe. We don't have a problem with that. Some of us are working really, still working on loving ourselves. And when you begin to love others, you'll see the miraculous. Because faith works by love. Would you pray one more time with love in Jesus' name for the work that God has already completed in you. Father, I thank you for your love that we receive, God. And I thank you, Lord, for the revelation that we need to give it out and give it back to you and give it and let it flow to somebody else as well, God. For faith only works by love that we may see more and more of the miraculous, not only in this building but outside, Lord. As we lay hands without fear, without timidity, on people that we know or we don't know, God. How should we take dominion and authority over every circumstances in our lives and in our families that the love of God may flow through it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you worship Him one more time? Would you thank Him for the work that He has done in you? He that began a good work in you will create it until the day of Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, praise God, praise God.